Even to this day, the four minute mile is one of the hardest athletic challenges you can do. Roger Bannister did it with six tenths of a second to spare. People really questioned whether a four minute mile was humanly possible. The Swedes during the war had got to four minutes, 1.2 seconds. And people said, well, there may be a barrier. You can't keep on running faster. Is four minutes the barrier? Now, this is an interesting topic in itself because it's the same with running, high jump, a lot of the athletics events, you know, it's, how high can someone really jump? How many extra millimetres can you do? Same as the sprints, the 100 metres, for example. Usain Bolt smashing these records. Who is going to physically be possible to beat those times? And, and I assume as technology, as technology increases and um, sports science gets better, then things obviously stand a chance. But Physically, how is it possible? It didn't make sense to me that there was a barrier and that if someone could run four minutes, 1.2 seconds, it was possible to run it in under four minutes. And that was what I did um, with my friends, uh, Chris Brasher and Chris Chatterway, who were setting the pace. My 1954, Roger Bannister ran his wonderful race in Oxford and 359.4. But it wasn't a normal race. And I knew that the real test, as John Landy had by then also broken the four minute mile, that the real test was to run in the Commonwealth, then Empire Games, against John Landy. I think that's sometimes the thing in, with these world records. It's it's not about just randomly do it in a park. You have to do it on a big stage, it, you know, with, with proper judges. It, it, that's when it really counts. That's when you get the world records. God, I wish I was any good at running. The story of how Roger Bannister first broke the four minute mile has been an inspiration to many of us. However, this was just the appetizer what would become one of the most exciting races ever run, the Miracle Mile. And then came the event for which the whole world was waiting. I've travelled halfway across the world to Melbourne to meet John Landy and to talk to him about the great race. Oh, lucky for some getting to travel around the world. Landy off to a fast start, number 300. Can you take us back, it's been almost 60 years now, to Vancouver and tell us how you're feeling on the day? Here were two people who had won this so supposedly impossible time, which is frankly nonsense, and they had to meet in the Commonwealth Games. I didn't have a coach. I had to sort of make up my mind how I was going to uh, run the race. And uh, I'd say, when I walked into the stadium and saw all these people, 28,000 people, it was a bit daunting. But um, I was used to, reasonably used to the competition, and uh, I guess I, I was nervous. Remember, back in this time when they were doing this and trying to beat the, the, the four minute mile, like he just said, they didn't have coaches. They, they didn't have the same sports science and physiotherapy and everything that they have today. Um, so that makes it so much more of an achievement back then. And I, and I think you have to almost, you almost have to take a second just to, to realize how much of an achievement it was back then. Landy now in the lead. There's the champion miler of oh, the world nice. in the lead now. Landy of Australia. Leading at the end of the first lap. What time do you have? 58-1, a fast lap 50, for Landy. 58-1, Landy in the lead in the first lap. I ran through the uh, first quarter mile and, and I was leading in about 58 seconds and I kept up the pace. I've come to Oxford to meet the man who won the race, Sir Roger Bannister. Oh, 
Welcome, Jasmine. No, Come on right. in. Thank you. I would have to walk up to get... You said in your autobiography that your race with Landy was one of the most intense and exciting moments of your life. What made it so special? Well, I had um, failed in the 1952 Helsinki Olympics. I was a, a favourite to win the gold medal, and I came fourth. And I was very disappointed with myself. The team were disappointed in me, and also the British public. Um, by then... So he had something to prove. He had he, failed in himself. He had failed the country, I suppose... So he had more to prove. You know, he, in these sort of situations, you either win and you are remembered, or you lose and you're not remembered. That's sadly just the way it is. It was getting difficult to combine sport and my medical studies. Yes. So I had the alternative of retiring, feeling dissatisfied, or going on for two more years when there were the Commonwealth Games and um, also the chance perhaps to break the four minute mile. So those were the uh, reasons why the 1954 became important to me and it was my last opportunity before having to retire. Landy still in the lead. Roger Bannister second and pulling up, decreasing the lead. In just a second, Royal will give us the time on the second lap. He's got such a steady pace, sir. and I know you've got to for this, but he's ahead of his world's record time. This it's far. almost quite robotic. Was there any point during the race with Landy where you thought perhaps you're not going to catch him? He was someone with greater stamina, uh, but on the other hand, I had a better finish, so I had to ensure that he took the lead and tried to exhaust me. Landy's still in the lead. Bannister second. We may be seeing history in the making here this afternoon in the Miracle Mile of Vancouver, British Columbia. I love how the commentators could almost sense it. They could almost sense that it was coming. And I got a good gap between myself and Roger Bannister. And coming to the third lap, I continued on, but he started to catch up. Be prepared for Bannister's famous burst of speed at the end of the fourth lap. We're now more than halfway through the third lap. Coming down the back straight, the sun was in such a position that I could see my shadow and his shadow, and I started to inch ahead a little bit, <laughs> which gave me some optimism, and some people on the inside of the track yelled out, you know, you're going well. You see now, the only two men in the world who have ever run the mile in less than four minutes. It's a very risky strategy, but I, I wanted to do it that way, and I reckon I had a 50-50 chance of yeah. winning it, but it was high risk. But I managed to get to his shoulder near the end of the fourth lap. Coming round the final bend, I went through the 1,500 metres just slightly behind my world records. I was really going pretty fast, but I realised that within another 20 metres or so that I couldn't hold the pace. And then I managed to overtake him, at the time, he happened to look over his left shoulder. Watch for the burst of speed from Bannister now. So he couldn't see that I was overtaking him. <laughs> and then when he looked back to the front, <laughs> oh, I was poor. already ahead. I feel sorry for him now. advantage, holding that advantage until the take. Roger Bannister in the lead. 20 seconds. Oh, he's exhausted. Absolutely exhausted after that. It's an incredible feat. Like I stress, they didn't have the sports science. They had none of all that, all the technology that they've got today. They've both put everything into that. Here's Royal Dorm Prime in just a minute. You never mentioned that you were running with stitches in your foot from standing on a flashbulb. Quite frankly, I didn't think about it at all for about 10 hours after the race. So it had absolutely no effect at all. Ignore the dog. Stepping on the floor. Now Bannister on his feet again, accepting congratulations, posing for pictures, but he's off the of United Press down by taking them. Royal, what was the time you got? Four, three fifty-eight, an awful close to a world's record it might be. They're hugging each other down there while they're checking the times. This might be a record, it's within a split second of it. The winner, number 
329, Dr. Roger Gilbert Bannister of England. Three minutes, 58 and 8 tenths seconds. A new British Empire and Commonwealth Games record, a new Canadian Open record. But what I like is if you look at that stat, England and Australia both got under a minute. That's what you want. They both got under the minute. And that is they both achieved they both achieved what they wanted. Granted, um, Bundy didn't win. Oh Landy, John Landy, sorry, didn't win. But they both got under the minute mile, and that's what they wanted to do. That's what they went there to achieve. In second place. Number 300, John Michael Landy of Australia. There's been lots of races with exciting finishes and lots of world records broken. Why do you think this race caused such a stir? It was a promoter's dream. It was like a world title fight. It attracted huge United States interest. We had many, many reporters who flew up from New York and elsewhere, United States to Vancouver to cover it. And so the background was quite different from any other race and uh, it attracted attention beyond the normal people who would follow athletics. Well, it caught the public image. Oh, I love the pictures when they're put into colour. How cool are the pictures that were in, in black and white originally and been made into colour? They're so good to look at. Imagination, the idea of four laps in a minute each and, and breaking that barrier um, which was, I thought, rather psychological than actual, um, was something which I said was inevitable. That he'd been, been building up for a long period of time. Oh, that's good. I wonder where that statue is. It's probably not going to tell me. It might be in Australia, I assume, or in England, one of them. leave it there it's it's a fantastic story and I, and I think I quick, did a quick google search and it's just over one and a half thousand people have done four minute mile well considering how many people are in this on this planet that's not a lot it's not a lot so even now to achieve it is is a great feat back then as I stressed they didn't have the same technologies the same sciences um, as we have now so it, fantastic fantastic but how much further how many more millimetres, how many more milliseconds can people push? I suppose we can only find out, can't we? I hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you did, like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.